Everybody, welcome back to the channel. I'm Robbie Craig of the Flip Flop Flipper. Today, I'm here with my new friend, Tony. And Tony, I'll butcher your last name, but is Ari? It is Ari. Is, it is Ari. Yeah. We practiced this beforehand, guys, and it's just difficult for me. I apologize. So we're going to talk to Tony. He's going to tell us about his business and his experience in Puerto Rico real estate. We're very excited to talk to you, Tony, because you are our new partner. You, you just helped us to close the Covians yeah. Plaza deal, and that was awesome. So thank you very much for You're that. You're welcome, and congratulations. Oh, I appreciate it. And so hopefully we can buy some more stuff over there in Covian's yeah. Plaza or anything in this kind of Juan Ponce de Leon area. But why don't you tell the YouTube channel here who you are and a little bit about your business? Well, basically I've been on the business of real estate almost eight years. It's been great. I've been learning since the market in Puerto Rico, nothing was selling. It was yeah. completely different than, than what we're living right now. And it's been amazing. Now I do commercial and residential. I'm the president of a board of a, a nonprofit foundation. So it's been back this year that has just passed. It's been quite challenging and new things coming to me as a real estate and agent and yep. being in the market. So I want to talk about the nonprofit stuff because I'm very excited about that. It's of course it's at Christmas time and we've got to get some toys out to some children. Okay. And I'm going to help you with that. And maybe some people on this channel will help us with that as well. But first I want to talk about what was real estate like eight years ago? Ago when you started and then we'll talk about what's happened kind of in the last three years because it's quite a change right so what what was real estate like eight years ago so this is pre Maria going back to what 2016 2015 yeah. something like that what was that like well basically when I started everyone was telling me oh you're good you're, you're gonna die of hunger you know <laughs> you're not gonna sell nothing and I'm like okay okay yeah 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 the way that when I partnered up with uh, MikoHeller.com, is the broker that I started with. He's very well known, a very nice guy. His, his name is Javier Rodriguez. And the way that he used to do the marketing, I learned from him a lot. Mm -hmm. He's very active on social media and CRMs and, you know, Silo back then and Point to Homes. So I gathered all that knowledge and started working as a real estate agent. But I had to sell a property, beachfront property, something that it's like a gem that you need to find. Something that's highly desirable. Yeah. yeah. It was something that I sometimes I had to give back the keys to the owner and tell them, you know what? For $50,000, let's say, a real example, in Playa del Junque, I had one unit of two bedrooms in Playa del Junque for $48,000, mm -hmm. and I told the owner at that time, sorry, I'm gonna give you back the keys, that's not selling. Mm -hmm. And even though that we've marketed the property, we did videos and, you know, live videos on Facebook, you know, at that time was very new on the market to do uh, the marketing. Yeah, eight, eight years ago, nobody was videos. doing that. No, was, no one yeah. was doing it. So I learned from him and he mm -hmm. started with it. So it was something that you needed to market the properties very hard and be very into it. You know, 40, 50 showings to sell one property. Wow. Right now it's a whole different story. Okay, so tell us about that. So th this makes sense because when we came to the island, there was a lot of real estate on the market, lots of bank owned stuff, lots of stuff that had been sitting for four or five years, even like on the market for four or five years with no offers. So we come in and we buy some stuff at really good prices. And then fast forward, our story is so that everything's kind of started to go up. Like we feel like the market in 2019 started to improve. 2020, I thought it's going to drop again because of the big flu and it just really sort of took off. Funny story, everyone thought that after the lockdown, yeah. properties were going to go down. I had clients that lost $500,000 in, in, you know, bonuses and, yeah. and, and you know, stock market. He sold his properties. He was going crazy. Right now, the properties that I sold to him and, and just right after the lockdown, it could they could sell right now for $2.5 million. I mean, he sold in for, you know, $800,000. Unbelievable, huh? It's crazy. Yeah. Unbelievable. So the change here on the on the market in Puerto Rico has really just kind of it's phenomenal what's happened really since 2020. So 2020 was a catalyst for real estate all over the country, but it was really a catalyst for Puerto Rico because people were locked up and they couldn't travel. And the island of Puerto Rico, people figured it out somewhere in mid 2020 that, hey, I can get there on a driver's license. I don't need a passport. People were off of island got to come home. So people like yourself, you said after Maria, you moved to Miami for a short time. Yeah, basically I moved to Miami for a short time to get my Florida real estate license. Okay. Um, but you know, right after Maria, same thing that happened with the lockdown, the market started going 
up and mm-hmm. people started buying properties and the, the market started moving. So I was going to start something new in, in Florida and everything was selling over here in yeah. Puerto Rico. So you know what? Even though that I was in Miami, I was selling properties over here because I had clients that wanted to see properties and probably I would send them a video or a 360 virtual tour and they say, you know, I like the property. Let's go see it. So I flew back yeah. to Puerto Rico, showed the property. And at some point I said, you know what? Why am I going to start something in Florida? when I have my thing in Puerto Rico that it's moving right now like crazy. And not only that, but the market was so low that we have a long way to go. Like there is quite a big lift to get to like mainland type prices. Not that we're going to get there anytime soon, but we are definitely headed that way. So housing is improving. Prices are going up. The availability of credit is better, but there are still bargains out here. And so what do you see moving forward for the next three years now? Well, Puerto Rico have, has received a lot of funds after the hurricane and, and the pandemic. And, you know, there's some money flowing. Mm-hmm. Plus, we have the Act 60s and, and, you know, people investing and that it's really good because they're taking properties like the one that you bought in Santurce that it was in, in distress and, and yeah. you know, the inside basically, not the outside because it was a commercial building. It's an incredible shape. It's probably in the best shape of anything we've ever bought. So. Yeah, and basically, for example, right next to Covian Plaza, I, I might have another listing that it might be for lease, but it's in distress mm-hmm. and, and it's like that. And people like you, that I really appreciate it, even though that any many people don't like it, I do because I rather live in a place that you can see nice properties that you can walk by and, and see the building that is being painted in in good shape. I don't want to live in a place that you go by and you see homeless and you see people that, you know, that have properties that are in distress, oh. doesn't have windows and things like that. So I, I really appreciate what you're doing and, and you're encouraging the local people because people think that the local people doesn't have money and doesn't have the same opinion. I know, I hear that a lot do. and it's not true, not, right? Nobody, it, it's a funny story. I'm sorry, I'm talking a lot. No, it's but great. In after Maria or before Maria, actually, no one wanted to buy those properties that the one that example that I did fifty thousand dollars in the right in front of the beach. The yeah. boxes, no one wanted to buy it. And now that people like you are encouraging people, local people to buy it. And, you know, it's been a lot of things that ha- have happened and people have found a way to take money to their pocket and invest it. And, you know, it's been a long journey that now people can do it and they're trying to do it. It's been challenging. It's been challenging even for me mm-hmm. to sell, to get listing and to buy. So I really appreciate what you're doing and (laughs) people, please don't get confused because you got the same opportunities and it's not the Act 60 that is being drawing the the prices up. It's been even the locals because now the locals want prime for their properties and it's understandable. Yep. So tell us, so the guy who didn't sell for 50,000, you handed him back the keys. Now, if he wants to sell it, what would you tell him to sell it for? Depending, it was a two unit, 280,000 to to 300,000 dollars. Right, five times. Yeah. Five times the amount of money he would have gotten six or seven years ago. Definitely. That's amazing. I mean, that's absolutely the story of the island is that eight years ago, nothing was moving. No one had work. People were leaving the island more than people were coming to the island. And that happened all the way through 2019. Now, finally, starting 2019, 2020, we see the population growth. It's small, but it's growing. The economy is growing. It's it's growing slowly. But guys, we're talking about an island that had a negative population growth and a negative economic growth for like 15 years in a row. So to have a positive growth, both in the population and economically, is flat out amazing. So I'm glad to hear you say the same thing that we say all the time on just about every video. You know, this island, when we're promoting businesses in Puerto Rico and we're asking people to come to Puerto Rico, we're talking to Puerto Ricans, right? Like we're inviting people to come home and, and we're just trying to open the eyes and say, there's opportunity on this island now where there wasn't for a long time. And I do get some gringo hate for it. And I get told that I'm doing this and I'm doing that. And you know, the truth is, I'm just one guy. I'm really a drop in the bucket. I can never affect the real estate market of Puerto Rico. If I spent all the money that I could ever get my hands on, I'm a drop in the bucket. But the local investors, they're the ones that are driving the market. They're doing great things. They're the ones that are selling. They're they're buying, they're fixing, they're selling. They're moving back to the island. I mean, it's so exciting to be a part of it. And I'm just, again, I'm a drop in the bucket. I'm a small part of this story. 
But I'm really happy to see and hear you say the same thing that I say is like, hey, don't be confused. If you're watching this video and you've heard that Act 60 is ruining the island and, and that you're not invited to participate in this and that you can't buy real estate, all of that stuff's a lie, guys. You've got to do your own research. You've got to look at this stuff for yourself and you can do it and it is for you. I understand one point that the locals can see at, from the other side. For yeah. example, we as locals, doesn't have the same tax advantage. You know, there's a lot of people that has money. Mm -hmm. they, they need to, to close their business, go to the States and come back. I understand that. So I encourage the government to do something about it and, and let local people to take advantage of the tax incentives. So no. we talk about the tax incentives all the time on this channel. Act 60 is more than just what used to be Act 22. And Act 22 is the one that really gives the black eye to all of Act 60. Act 22 is the one that kind of prohibits locals. Unless you've been off island for a long time, you could come and take advantage of it. But if you've been on the island, they don't allow for whatever reason. And I've said this before, I think this is a very poorly written law. There's no reason to not encourage locals to invest and allow them a no capital gain situation. And so I agree that we would implore the government to simply rewrite that part of Act 60 because the rest of it does allow for people that are locals, whether you've been off island or not, you, you qualify for the Young Entrepreneurs Act, you qualify for export services, you certainly qualify for all of the hospitality stuff, which is what we like to do. We like to invest in hospitality yeah, projects yeah. through Act 60. All of that's available to the locals. It's yeah. this one thing, this used to be called Act 22, and it gives the whole act a black eye and, and people get really upset about it. And I understand that they're not- you I understand it too, by the way. I hate to be told no on anything. And so if, if I'm living here and you tell me I can't do something, I'm like, well, wait a second, you're going to let these people come in from off island and they get to do something I can't do? That's and bullshit. You, and you can't promote hatred because of one person that came from the States and did something wrong. You know, there's a lot of people moving here and doing the right stuff and, and trying to, you know, make Puerto Rico better. Yeah. And that's the point. You yeah, know. yeah I, I think Act 60 as a whole has been a tremendous boon for the island of Puerto Rico. It's created jobs, it's created investment, it's brought some pretty powerful people back to the island. So I, I think it's Act 60 is probably directly or indirectly brought back more locals than people who have come just for the acts. So while there's maybe a few thousand people who come a year for the last few years to join the act that aren't Puerto Rican birth or Puerto Rican blood, more people who, who have left the island are coming back even if they're not a part of the act because of the opportunity that's here. Now that's not all because of Act 60, but just the island itself, there's job opportunities everywhere. There's more work than there are people to fill the work, right? There's more jobs that are out there than there are people to do the jobs. That's a really good thing. That's a great reason for people to think, hey, I can go to Puerto Rico and make a good living. And we're seeing wages rise. Are you seeing this as well? Well, the lack of employees had made the employer their, pay more. Their, their payments. Yeah. You know, you know the, what they pay to the employees because if you don't, if you can't find a person, a secretary, because there's nothing, and the the good one is working for another person. Yeah. What you have to do. You need to increase your your payment by hour just to get her to work with you. you That's know, right. It, it's like that. <laughs> this so, is another thing that we say on the channel all the time. It's like once you've got a good skill set, if the guy who's paying you your wage isn't paying you enough and won't give you a raise, there's someone else out there that wants to hire you. And that's especially true here in Puerto Rico. And we see it a lot, right? Like people are able to step up their level of wage because they've got a good skill set. And it's very desirable to hire people who can do a good job, who can provide that kind of service. So Tony, tell us, how did you get started in real estate? Wow, that's a long story. You know, the long story short, basically, I've always had a business. Since I was 18 years old, I was, you know, looking for something. When my dad died in 2004, I had no nothing to do. You know, I was a kid that everything was given to him. Thank God, I don't complain. But uh, at that point, I needed to start something. Mm -hmm. So my first business was a car wash. Okay. I started as a car wash, then I went to sell jewelry and uh, eyeglasses. I had sold shoes, you name it. People went talk to me. You're out, you had done, a business. I've done anything basically. <laughs> but uh, at some point in my life, there's a saying in Puerto Rico that 
if you do a lot of things, basically I'm mm -hmm. trying to translate it at once, you lose it. You okay. Know? Yeah. So at that time I had the car wash, the carts in the mall. I had the cart in, in Bucanan and I have a lot of things going on. You had a lot of balls in the air. Yeah. You were and juggling. the crash and it was crazy at that time. I don't know how. I looked on an announcement and I started working at Armor Trucks. Armor Trucks, okay. Yeah, and I, my thought was like, I'm gonna work there for six months, I'm gonna get some money and get out of it and that's fine. When I look back, it was five years. Wow. And five years over there, it's hard, it's... I did like it because of the adrenaline, you know. Were like, you like guarding money and driving the truck or...? I, I, I used to put money on the ATMs and, and yeah. carrying as much money as you can think of. Oh, good. And <laughs> it was crazy, you know, and I used to like it because it was the rush. The yeah. Adrenaline. And having in carrying that kind of money, it's crazy. So, but I had my goals. And when I decided it was because I had my, during that period, I took my real estate license. So, and there was a lot of things that happened in those years. So I paused that license, keep on working on that company. Mm -hmm. Very nice company. And you know, I really liked the, those people over there. So basically I started working over there and five past five years, I look back and I got my goals, you know, and I met uh, my ex-partner that is a nice guy, Javi from Ecuador.com, and I met him on the Florida real estate course. Talked to him and I said, you know what, I've got my license right now, so let's start working today together. And he was like, yeah, okay, let's be later. One day he calls me, he texts me, come to Starbucks, let's meet over here. And I'm like, okay. And so he, he made the interview and he said, you know what, take these keys, go to that house, sell it or come to me after. So when I came back, I said, you know what, here's your offer and let's do the contract. He was like, wow, impressed. So you got so it sold. At my first showing, my first sale. Wow, that's impressive. And he was like, well, yeah. okay, let's start working together. And from there, he gave me the contract. So here's, your, here's the contract, fill it out. You're gonna get used to it, read it out. And from there on, it was sell. You know, sell in Puerto Rico, sell all properties that I was handed. Yeah. Except one or two that didn't sold. So that brings up an interesting topic that we get a question about a lot. In Florida, we have what's called the MLS, the Multiple Listing Service. Right. And you can put a property on there. And basically every realtor in the state instantly gets that notice and that listing. And there's there's a complete cooperation amongst these buyer's agents, these seller's agents, and the system is really phenomenal. Now, in Puerto Rico, we don't quite have that system. Talk a little bit about how you go about listing a property and what's the process to find a buyer here on the island compared it to Miami, because you said you've got a Florida yeah. license as well. Yeah, basically when I started here, uh, let's go back then. Yeah. I had to upload every property independently to Zillow, to Point to Homes, to Classificados Online. And the main MLS over here is basically like a Craigslist, yeah. you know? It's Classificados Online. Yeah, you can sell here for, for locals here, but if you wanna have a reach, you gotta be part of Zillow, Realtor.com, and you know, you gotta be part of the board in order to get that reach mm -hmm. right now. Because back then I had to upload it individually, one by one. To right every now, site that you're gonna list it on, you have yeah. to go individually. Right now, we have two MLSs. That is a shame because you gotta focus all this in one MLS. We got the Stellar MLS, that's the one that I use, and that's the most powerful. That's basically the north, the MLS of the north part of uh, Florida, and then you got the Miami MLS. So okay. They're basically the same thing but they have a good reach and it's a powerful tool. So that's good that finally we're starting to see some of these systems get implemented. We recently just did an interview with the Red Atlas people. I don't know if you know them, but they're right they're up. like organizing the data on the island, which is amazing. So all of these things are sort of happening simultaneously. We're, we're going to have MLS, we're gonna have better data. So you're going to see the ability of real estate to transact become easier and more systemized. So it's nice to hear that that's yeah, your experience the clients too. that if you're going to list a property with a broker, just find a way that get to know that broker. If they don't answer calls, if they don't respond to your messages, you know, you should consider other options because mm -hmm. they're good brokers and it's a chain. There's people that they don't do the profession as it should. So yeah, be part of the MLFs. Definitely. That's a most because from there, you just, you provide the data to the world as it should, you know? You can leave the property not under contract when it's under contract. 
because mm -hmm. there's some fines on the MLS, you know, that's good because when the buyer comes, they're well informed. Yeah. You know? Do you uh, cooperate with other brokers on your yeah. listings? You I do. Think. Okay. Think. So you're the one because not a lot of people on the island necessarily do this cooperation. Yeah. Thing. But you know why? It's because there's a lot of brokers that they give away their job. And for me, selling a property of $80,000 is the same work as selling as a property $8 million. You know? yeah. It's the same process, it's the same work, and you should value your work. And a lot of brokers, they don't like to do business with other brokers is because of their commission, because yeah. their commission is too low and then they don't have space to share their yeah. commissions. You know, for example, me, I'm, I'm a person that I spend a lot of money marketing and videos and, and Facebook ads and Zillow, the MLS, you know, Google ads. And it's a lot of ways to market a property, but you need to have a good commission in it because I don't collect anything. If until you don't sell it. It's closed. When it's closed, I collect my money. And yes, it's a good commission, probably, but there's a lot of fees and a lot of uh, expenses in the process that I need to take in consideration in order to, to survive in this industry. Yeah. And yeah. Well, and we want you to survive and thrive. And But for a consumer, yeah. I want to see systems put into place. I think that yeah. the systems, as they grow, as the data becomes better, then there will be sort of another push up in the real estate prices because right now it is still sort of like the Wild West, right? But anyways, I, I think it's all headed in the right direction. And so we're excited to be a part of it. Yeah. And we're excited to be in business with you. And hopefully we can buy some other stuff. Maybe we're going to go look at another condo that you've got. I got one in Dorado sale. that's short-term rentals. At three yeah. Nine. 389 in Dorado. So Dorado guys is like the place to be on the island. So and in Isla Verde, I got another one in Playa yeah. or 625. On the beach. Those two are new listings and great listings. So if you want to take a look at it, just call me 787-552-8909. Oh, tell Robert to contact me and I'll be around. Yeah, I'm going to go see this uh, property over in Isla Verde at the very least. Uh, I'm not looking to live in Dorado, but I've been looking in Isla Verde for a place to live and, and that, that condo could work. Well, you should come because it's amazing, an amazing view. It's a two bedroom convertible to three or you can use that third space to do it as a office. Okay. Or people that, you know, if you have people to come and visit. Yeah. It's a great location to have. A, they have a pool, gym, sauna, you know, game room. Yeah. Playground, you know, direct access to the beach is one of the best beaches in, in Isla Verde. It really is. It, it's beautiful. It, at one time, I think if I can recall in 2018, it was awarded the best urban beach in the world. You know, so it's a great condo. The HOA over there is very low. Yeah. So you should come by. Ingress and egress is really easy. You're on the highway. You're at the airport. I mean, yeah, everything is everything about it. It's a great place to live. There's no doubt about it. So tell us now, let's talk about your nonprofit. So basically my you can contact me at realtybrokerpr.com that's my website you can look at it on instagram and facebook it's realtybrokerpr or realtybrokerpr.com in my website it's 787-552-8909 my name is tony Lizari. i've been born and raised here i know the market i do commercial and residential so if you need something Call me. Yeah. Hesitate in calling me because I do answer calls. He does answer calls. He's answered a lot of calls for me recently as we've been doing our transaction. Yeah, you, you were great. So I highly recommend Tony, guys. And, and we do get asked this a lot. Are there good local realtors? And you're definitely one of them. So I will keep my the way that I do business and the way that I try to do business is answer calls and do my service, you know, because you need to provide service to your clients. So that's my main goal. Yeah. And I do answer calls. He does answer calls. He even showed up. I think I, I showed up on a Friday at the property unannounced and he came over on his day off and, and helped me with what I was trying to do. Anything that so, I can. So, all right. So look, now let's talk about the nonprofit. It's Christmas time. We got to get some toys for some kids. Yes. Uh, basically, uh, the nonprofit, I'm the board president of the nonprofit is called Living in Harmony Foundation. Uh, we're going to be working on providing them, uh, the employees, some training on how to work with people that have been segregated from or abandoned from the society. Basically, abandoned kids that are from homes of the government and elderly. Okay. That group of people that need a lot of help. Mm -hmm. And especially the kids. Those kids at certain age, they need to leave the homes and the place that they take care of them and they don't have nowhere to live. So it's been, that's our goal to work with those kind of kids. And it's been a challenge this year to start the nonprofit and 
it's gonna come Christmas now. So we're asking people for new toys. The office is in Covians Plaza, LM12. You can bring them over here, starting from the age of five to 15. Yep. And as soon as we have at least 300, 200 toys, we're gonna call all of these homes and daycares of kids so that they can come to Plans Plaza. We're gonna be delivering them to those kids directly. Okay. So yeah, please help us. Uh, and that's our main goal. And we're gonna try to eradicate uh, the people that have been left out. Yeah, so we'll go shopping and Don and I will go shopping and we'll, we'll buy some toys. We'll bring them over to you guys. I always encourage generosity, guys. I think it's a way of life. Being generous is one of the joys that you get in life. So if you want to help some children on the island of Puerto Rico, consider giving to and say the nonprofit's name again. It's Living in Harmony Foundation. Uh, we're located at Covians Plaza. El just below the building or the, yeah, the space we just purchased. Yep. Uh, so you can bring them over here. Anything is welcome as long as it's from the age from 5 to 15 anything is welcome and thank you yeah and anybody who wants to help and, and you want to have us help put you in contact the flip flop flipper pr gmail.com that's a great email for us send me an email leave me a comment tell me you want to do something i'll make sure you get connected with tony let's do as much as we can as a community we want to be very generous so you can count on us for support and hopefully you can count on some people from the channel for support and uh yeah so that's good hey guys so thanks for watching that video watch this one next and if you want to get in touch with Tony, we'll have his contact information in the credits below here. Robert, thank you for having me. Yeah, thanks and for coming thank in. Thank you for inviting me and having me here. All right. Give us a like, smash that subscribe button for us, guys. God bless.